This particular Seafoot building is much admired. The National Trust plus Croydon. You wouldn't think that equals walking tour, but it does. This building here is Suffolk House. Branching out from stately homes, the Trust is telling the story of Croydon's 60s building boom, celebrating its controversial concrete legacy. Certainly, as you look at the view behind me, that's something that in the 1960s would have been absolutely unlike anything anywhere else. Is there beauty in that tower just there? Personally, I think there is, actually. It's saying to you, you can't avoid me. Next stop, the Whitgift Centre. It was built in about 1970. It's on a site of 11 acres. What's not to love about Croydon from the grandiose Fairfield Halls, the old town hall and its impressive Victorian clock tower to some of the finest examples of 60s concrete. But not everyone sees it the same way. During the Rugby World Cup, French journalists based in Croydon with their national team were less than impressed. Dull and monotonous, they call it. And among the locals who love it, there are those that don't. You're a fan of the concrete then? Certainly, certainly. I'm a fan of this concrete island. I don't think it's very nice. You're not all that into the architecture no. in Croydon? No. <laughs> There's a lot of concrete here. There's a lot of ugly buildings as well. It doesn't stand out to you then, basically? Not really. The tour is coming to a close. It's a view of Croydon's ambitious future. Billions in the pipeline due to be spent. Could this put to rest a few of the town's image problems? It's something uh, that's picked up on from, from people who, who are not working here, who don't live here. Um, and it is quite a historical thing. There's many visions of what Croydon could soon be looking like. Another concrete revolution is unlikely to figure. Jim Weeble, BBC London News.